everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. We have a full WWE Elite action figure set review for you guys, and it is on the brand new WWE Elite Decade of Domination full Walmart exclusive wave. Super excited to get into it. As you guys know, if you guys missed my video yesterday, I uploaded it very late. It was like 5.30 p.m. Central or something like that. We went on a toy hunt. Me and my boy John went on a toy hunt, and when we went, we actually found, or we didn't find them, but he went to a different location. There was two Walmarts. He, up, he hit up one of them before he picked me up. Then we went to my other location. Well, earlier in the day, the one location had three of them. They had the John Cena, the Undertaker, and the Randy Orton. Well, then later that night, two or three hours later, after we had just literally went to my second location, the one near my house, they did not have Mark Henry or Natalia or any of the figures. But when he went, they had all of them. So I asked him to go ahead and grab me Mark Henry and Natalia so that I could put up the full set review for you guys today. So I'm really excited. We got the full wave right here, and it's looking pretty good. The second wave is going to consist of Big Show, Triple H, Kane, Kofi Kingston, and Beth Phoenix. Those will be hitting very soon. I'm, I'm guessing around the Christmas time is what I would guess. It could be after the new year. However, we've already reviewed Triple H. If you guys missed that video, definitely check it out. But today, guys, we have the full set here. I cannot wait to crack them open. Let's go ahead and take a little shot of all of them. If you guys watch the Triple H review, you'll know that on each of their individual package, here's the Randy Orton figure. Down here by their names, the camera is trying to do a stipsy on me. You guys can see by the name or just above the name, they have images of the of the talent right here throughout the year. So throughout the decade, you guys will see images of the superstar as it goes through here. And I'm not even seeing a John Brown image of the man from this figure. So that's kind of weird. I mean, you got it on the side over here. And then on this side, you have like that classic look of Randy Orton. But so if you guys did not know, they pretty much made this wave about people who were around when the line first began. So in 2010, when Mattel and WWE formed the partnership, they are pretty much giving us 10 figures of talent that have been around since 2010 that are still with the company today, which I think is so sick. There's other people that could have clearly put in here, but I like the 10 they selected. I think it's pretty cool. And everybody has their own individual cool box. And I want to get through here. So if you guys want to see the Undertakers up here, you guys can see here, here's the Undertakers images. And then down here, you got more here. Really cool stuff, man, how they did this. I always think it's hilarious. On the left side of the Decade of Domination logo, there's always like a small like, headshot of each guy. But here is the side images of the Undertaker. Really cool packaging, man. The paint splatter effect that they got going on right here is really cool with all of them. But here's a front viewing window look of Cena. You got the side of Cena. You got the other side of Cena. Oh, dude, what a sick, nasty, farticle shot that is. If you guys are noticing, he has a regular hat on there, and then he has the bucket hat on. There's a lot of inconsistencies with the John Cena figure, so don't worry about that. If you want to read that, you can pause it now. They all say the same thing. It's just talking about the partnership with Mattel and WWE, so they don't have their own individual, like, John Cena, Undertaker, Randy Orton bio, but they do all have their unique images, which is really cool. I love that one. Of Oh, dude, that's sick. They have the image of Cena when he took on Edge at Unforgiven in the TLC match. That is sick nasty. Damn, dude, that's so cool. I'm getting nostalgia pops all over this, dude. Oh, man, that's sick. So knocking out the last two figures, guys, here is Mark Henry, and there's the side of Mark Henry. And then you have the images of Henry down here. You got the Hall of Pain stuff. And then on the top, you got the Bit on Destruction. And you got other Mark Henry shots. Really cool. And then last but not least, we do have Natalia. There is Natalia there. You got the other shot of Natalia on the side there. A completely different look than she does now. Holy crap. So there's some shots of Natalia, a little headshot, and then the rest of the images up there. So it's really unique how they made everybody's package really individual and they made it, you know, they catered it to that person. I think that's awesome. I think it would have been really cool since this is supposed to celebrate 10 years of Mattel and WWE. It would have been really cool to see like the list of different elites from each character. You know, every elite Randy Orton could be featured on the back, every elite Undertaker, every elite John Cena. I think that'd be really cool to have like at least a list of them. Images would be nice, but I think a list of them would have been really cool. But anyways, guys, let's shut the hell up and dive into the first wave of the Decade of Domination WWE Elite set that is exclusive to Walmart, and they should be hitting your area immediately. Like, if you're seeing this video, they're probably at your local Walmart, so go check for sure, but let's go ahead and pop them open. Really dumbass idea to do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Decade of Domination wave out of their packaging as a whole unit here. We don't have all 10 for the Decade number, but we do have the first five. Again, the second five should be releasing in the next few months. I would imagine either right before Christmas time, you know, right there at the holidays or just after the new year, if I had to guess. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm giving you my best guesstimate based on my, you know, aspect and what I would expect. Now, diving in, guys, since there are five figures right here and we don't have it a traditional two, like, 
like we do in an elite review. We're going to do like we usually do in a full set wave like this, and we're just going to pull the figure up, take a look at it, take a look at its accessories, do some comparisons, and we're not going to spend a ton of time on each figure, but I will try to do the most aspects as I can of the figure, and I guess what we can do is start off with the Dead Man, celebrating 30 years right here. We have The Undertaker, and I'm going to raise this up a little bit. So raising it up, guys, I did bring the lamps a little bit down on his ass right there because he is dark, you know, he's got the freaking black on, you can see the hat covering, so this is kind of like a re-release, right? Because we've seen this head sculpt before, it is, uh, it's in true effects now. I know for a fact the, the, what was it, the first ever entrance grates of The Undertaker was very similar to this, and then we had the WrestleMania 31 Heritage figure that we also got, but this one looks the best, man. I love this sculpt that we got going. The eyes look really good, the purple around the eyes, that Mark Calloway likeness and the beard and the hair design looks really, really good. I like this a lot. I think they did a fantastic job on this. Any Undertaker fan will be really proud. I mean, you can see the figure here, and you can see the Undertaker back there. He looks fantastic. He also comes with his gray tie. I think this is the first time we're ever getting these stripes with this, like, sheen to it. It's kind of like a silky sheen material that's coming off. It is on an elastic band, so you can take this off of the figure if you would like. Spinning it around, he also comes with his beautiful black trench coat. I am going to take this off. You guys can already kind of see what he looks like in the coat, so I'm going to take this off, and we'll take a look at what we got underneath. So here's the figure underneath. You guys can see the torso. This is pretty much a re-release of that figure of the of the first one ever, and I don't know what the hell is this. I don't know why he has that, like, cut in the middle of his chest. I don't know what's going on right there. It's like there's a damn cut across his chest. It's like an M shape. You guys seeing this? I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, there's a cut in the middle of his chest. Uh, anyways, I don't think that's been there on other takers, but articulation feels good on this guy. Long black pants like we've seen before on this figure. Again, it's very similar to the Elite 23, very similar to that WrestleMania 31 Heritage figure, except for this one, it has the gray boot covers and like an off-white light gray color, and then in the gloves, they are black. So this is very sick. He also includes the Randy Orton hands, or the, you guys know, where you get down on the knee and you lift up the hand, and it's like, why, God, why? So that's that's pretty cool. I like that they included those hands for The Undertaker. I think it works perfect. I love these gauntlets. These gauntlets look new. This looks like a new sculpt compared to his other figures. I feel like his other gauntlets that he used to get didn't have this nice shape or this nice sculpt in there. This looks way more accurate, way more natural, like gloves, than his other sculpt that he used to get. So I like the way that's turning out a lot. Really dig that. Really cool. Did an excellent job on that. And then his other accessories are for interchangeable hands are Mike holding hands. And then he does have his hat to go with his coat. And what I don't like is I got a little nitpick right there. You guys can see that. I don't think that's supposed to be that way. But yeah, I got a little dig in my hat. So my hat's all torn. If it's supposed to be like that, then that's really sick. I doubt it's supposed to be like that, but it would kind of make sense if he's an Undertaker, his hat's all worn. It's got the gray color going around. It's kind of inconsistent right there, but I'm not going to deduct football points. Overall, really strong figure. I like the skin tone on it. I like the likeness because he's supposed to be real pale because he's supposed to be like a ghost or, you know, a dead guy, so I like that. The paleness of the figure is really sick. Tie looks good. I really like it. One thing I will say is the legs are a little bit stiff. Actually, no, they're actually, okay, they're, they're actually quite good. He is not on ball joints. Um, we've seen these kind of legs before from Taker, and they're usually really stiff. This one moves a whole lot better than the WrestleMania Heritage figure. So the Undertaker starting off the set really strong. Actually, you know what? Before we stop talking about the Taker, though, I do want to give a quick comparison because we have like a uh, how it started versus how it's going going. And we have the Elite 79 Taker compared to the beginning. So it's kind of like a current day Taker compared to a debut Taker. And so there you go. Crazy as hell, man. Time flies. You blink and you're 70. Insanity. And then for our other comparison, we have the comparison between the Heritage figure. And we're going to take a look at this right here and you guys can see I mean again this one does not look bad whatsoever you guys can kind of see the gloved hands right there I can't really see the gauntlets that well but overall man the, this one I definitely like the new decade of domination figure better it just looks cleaner man very very nice stuff now moving on to John Cena guys this John Cena figure I do not know what to think all right I do not know what to think about this guy he does come with his white bucket hat that I like now the one thing about this head sculpt is I actually think this head sculpt shows more likeness to John Cena than the uh, what was it? The defining moments, the second defining moments. He does have a little bit of schmutz on the middle of his forehead, looking like Anthony Davis out here. But he does come with his lock chain, which is beautiful, and he comes with his word life gauntlets that go beautifully on these hands right here. I think I, oh God, I thought I freaking lost it forever. He also comes with his 33 jersey. Now this is supposed to be a Boston Celtics jersey, and he did not wear this white bucket hat with this specific jersey. So they just kind of made a look up here because he's got the blue jean jorts as well as these white Converse looking shoes. And this is supposed to be a Celtics jersey again, but they can't put the Celtics likeness on there or they'd have to pay the Celtics.
Celtics for the rights to it. But this head sculpt looks like it has more likeness to Cena over his other one uh, when it was painted in a different color and everything like that. It is more of like a brownish color or reddish brown, which I'm not enjoying, but I think the likeness, again, does look better than that second Defining Moments. The True Effects technology definitely looks better. He has black wristbands, and one thing I'm definitely going to do is do some part switching and stuff on surgery and make this guy more accurate to the time, but he has that same massive John Cena torso. I really don't want to unplug this, but I got to see what it looks like underneath the shirt. I do like that you have like the underwear showing right here, like the boxers showing. You got the nice blue jorts going on and the long sleeves. I don't know. It's just a plain Jane John Cena, you know? It's nothing too over the top or immaculate, but we're going to try and fix this guy up as best as we can, but it's definitely probably the most plain Jane figure in the set. Um, yeah, it's got the same loosey-goosey ankles that I'm not looking forward to. Don't want those to get loose, but we're going to we're gonna play with this guy. We're going to play with some different fix-ups and stuff, and we're, we're hopefully going to be able to get this guy going and looking better up on the shelf. Maybe put some custom gear on him and stuff and switch him around, and I'm going to put this white bucket hat on a different figure, and I, I don't know. We're just going to switch all the things up, but as far as his accessories go, he does have the word life sort of hands here. You guys know that he used to... He put the word life right there, so you got those interchangeable hands. You also have you can't see me hands which are also beautiful and then it would not be a good figure without mic holding hands so he also has mic holding hands so you get mic holding hands you can't see me hands word life hands you also have the bucket hat you got the celtics jersey and then you have the word life pendant with the lock chain and that is pretty much it for your cena figure i really wish they'd retool these ankles man i'm really tired of these ankles because they get super loose and once they're loose they're gone forever you can forget about it unless you do the mod podge method but just like undertaker i do want to do this comparison real quick so we have a how it started sort of versus how it's going and you got the last really John Cena that we have. It's just an elite Cena with the updated arms on there and the head skull from Super Showdown and I mean we really haven't seen him since Wrestlemania man when he took on the Fiend but I'm hoping we get him to come back soon man. He's the GOAT. Now moving forward guys we do have one of the figures I was most excited for and that is the debut or early 2002 Randy Orton and this looks great. This head sculpt is immaculate dude. Oh my god in heaven. I've been wanting a young Orton with the longer hair and so very long it reminds me of Survivor Series 2002 where he had the long hair and he had his arm in a sling from the shoulder injury. I'm pretty sure that's what that's supposed to be. I think he was wearing a WrestleMania t-shirt or something. He's got all his nice tattoos on there, white wrist tape, this navy and yellow attire with Orton down here. You got the pinstripes on the back, Orton on the back. And uh, the, the first thing I think of when I look at this figure is his debut versus Hardcore Holly. And uh, he won that matchup in an upset. He also comes with his interchangeable head. This is from his debut. So he came out looking like this against Hardcore Holly, got the upset victory and uh, oh my god in heaven. So for his accessories, you don't get much. You just get the interchangeable, you know, Legend Killer Orton head sculpt. I'm going to keep it like this. I'll, I'll probably buy a second one to put this head sculpt on there because, you know, I want to have the two different looks there. But this is this is definitely what I like to see. So he comes with fists and mic holding hands. I'll definitely put the mic holding hands on there. But he comes with blue open knee pads and then just regular black boots. Pretty plain Jane figure, guys. But if you're an Orton fan, you know what it's about, man. You know what it's about and you, you love to see it. So there is Orton. I like this figure a lot. So you have sort of a then a now and a forever so that's pretty cool right there release it dude how sick would that be if we started getting three packs you know you get the freaking then now forever three packs i know we've gotten that in the past but what if you included the same superstar just three different looks over the career that'd be dope but there's sort of your blast from the past uh of how orton has kind of progressed but after randy orton guys we do have nation of domination mark henry now he does come with the nation of domination hat right here i'm really not feeling this head sculpt i don't feel like it looks like mark henry that much and mark henry figures i really want to love because I love Mark Henry. I think he's fantastic. I like everything going on with this figure. The likeness could be better, but this is what I hate about Mark Henry's, man. The articulation is bummerific. Like, yeah, he can do the splits. He's okay, but this man cannot kick forward. Look at this. Look at this. I feel like his leg is going to snap off. You can never move his legs forward. Please put this man on ball joints. Put him on ball joints so he can move. You can't. He can't even walk. I feel like the figure is going to snap in damn half. But anyways, you have his large black knee pads. You have the nice Nation of Domination patterns going on. Solid black attire. You do get interchangeable fists with this guy. And you also get a barbell that we have seen many times in the past. So you have the barbell. You get the dumbbells. Not the dumbbells. You get the barbell with the weights. You can take this off and slide these weights off if you would like. But yeah, you also get the Nation of Domination cap, which is really nice. If you're just going to put this guy up on, the, up on the shelf and pose him, that's fine. But good luck getting this guy to walk. That's all I'm going to say. So 
So this is definitely probably the most disappointing figure as far as posing around goes, because he ain't moving, Brad. He is not moving. His arms and chest is fine, but the rest of it, hold up. I gotta get my, I gotta I keep forgetting to do my comparison here. You got then, and you got now, kind of. I know he's retired now, and I don't think he has dreads anymore, but there's your blast from fat. See what? This one has better articulate. He can actually leave his leg there. He can, okay, this one can move a little bit. My Elite 5 sure as hell can't move. So this Mark Henry can move. This one, Brad? Uh-uh. His leg's gonna snap. I can feel it in my bones. But then for your Nation of Domination comparison, here is The Rock, and then here is D'Lo Brown. Now, I used to have the Farouk, but I think I ended up selling it. Really wish I had it, but we could have completed our Nation of Domination. I know a lot of people have been waiting on this Mark Henry, so I know a lot of people are gonna be excited about getting him to complete that Nation. So there is Mark Henry, and then the last figure in the set, guys, is going to be Natalia. Now, getting through her accessories real quick, she does come with fists and interchangeable mic holding hands, so that is really nice. But uh, as far as accessories, she does come with the Divas Championship, which we've seen many a time in the past. I think this uh, bright, shiny version came with the, the ringside exclusive belt pack. It may have come with another figure, too. Maybe Elite 32 page. She also comes, or Elite 34 page. You also have this black table stand that we've seen many a times before. Really hard, solid plastic. And then you have the Natalia figure, which uh, I like this head sculpt. I think it definitely looks like Natalia. I feel like her hair may be a bit more red than brownish. I feel like some brownish tones could come through. But you got your nice blue, white, and gold attire. Uh, her legs feel good. She is double-jointed knees, so that is excellent to see. I like her boots a lot. They are still basic articulation. Again, really need the women's figures to get the, the ankle pivot on their figures. I know some of them have it, but most of them don't, so we really need to get that for all of them moving forward. It would make them a lot better. But there is Natalia. Uh, you know, her belly button is showing through there. You do get some nice sparkle designs going around. Nice singlet attire. I mean, this attire is brutal compared to her other figure. Now, if we want to compare it to her Elite 74 figure, I definitely like her Elite 74 better. She definitely, uh, I, I just like the blonde look for her better. I like this head sculpt better. Um, her attire is better. The, bl the black and pink is very clean, and I don't know. I just definitely like the Elite 74 better, but there is your blast from the past for your comparison of Natalia figures. Never thought I'd have more of an earlier Natalia, but there it is. I I'm glad I picked it up. But there is your two different Natalia figures, and uh, the torso right here is very nice. The nice sculpted on studs and stuff is sick, and this looks just like Natalia. Very nice. But anyways, guys, I think that pretty much does it for our full decade of Domination Wave review. If I had to rank them, alright, let's rank these full Alright, let's go ahead and do it. Starting out last, I'm gonna go with Mark Henry simply because you can't move him. It's just, it, bruh, I, I just, I can't stand when figures can't move. When they feel like a statue, I don't like it. So I'm gonna go Mark Henry. I'm gonna go Natalia next simply because I just, you know, I wasn't really looking forward to this figure. I can't really fix it up or change anything up with it. Next up, I am gonna go John Cena. Now, the only reason John Cena's coming down here is because it's pretty plain Jane, but he still, he can move around. Uh, I can do some really cool fix-ups with it. John Cena's the GOAT. He's my favorite wrestler, so that's why he comes in here. And at the top two spots, woo, this is really hard. I think I'm going to go Randy Orton here, even though I was really, really highly wanting this figure in my collection. It's pretty plain Jane outside of that. But with The Undertaker, you get the updated head sculpt. You get the nice glove. Uh, you know, the wrist gauntlet glove stuff looks good. I like the interchangeable hands. And on top of it, you get this bitchin' trench coat that is super nice in the hand. It feels really good. And, I mean, you can't beat that accessory right there. So that is my ranking of Decade of Domination, guys. Thank you so very much. Again, check your Walmarts if you guys would like. They should be there any day now if they're not already. For a shout out guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to Cyrus Reeves for this comment in our last video. He says, I want to sit in that damn recliner. Referring to my gaming chair from my toy hunt video because every time I start off a video with my face, I'm always leaning back in the reclining chair and it's more of a gaming chair. It just reclines so I think that's hilarious. I laughed at that comment so I wanted to give a shout out to Cyrus Reeves for that awesome comment. Thank you so much to Cyrus and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys did enjoy Joy. Comment down below for a potential shout out. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.